Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to a new screencast lecture. It is year 2021, so let's get rolling. Continental drift. Sounds good. Now, if we were to take a look at the Earth from space, what is it going to look like? Well, it's going to look like this, and you can see the uh, North American continent here. You can see the South American continent here. And if you're able to see the interior of the Earth, what would it look like? It's going to look something like this, where you have this layer, and here's another layer, here's another layer, here's another layer. And if you can break those layers into pieces, you can see the solid metal inner core. You can see a molten metal outer core. You can see what's called the mantle and the crust. And even the upper mantle and crust are broken into the smaller pieces and layers. The basic layers of the interior of the earth that I'm going to expect you to know are these. You got, and what I would do is maybe draw a very simple sketch. You don't need to draw the continents, but just draw a very, very simple sketch of the interior of the earth. And let's say, let's go from the outside in. So the outermost layer is the crust. That's where we are. Below that is the mantle. And then you have the outer core and the inner core. Let's take a look at a map of the continents. Does it look like any of these continents could fit together if they were closer to one another? Take a look and think. Well, in the early 1900s, there was a German, his name was Alfred Wagner. He looked at this map, kind of like you were doing today, and he thought that it looked like some of these continents could fit together. In particular, let's take a look at South America and Africa. Well, they look pretty similar. It looks like these two pieces would fit together just like a jigsaw puzzle. And if you push all the other continents together, you might get something that looks like this. Yeah, so like I was saying, Alfred Wagner thought that the continents looked like they could fit together, and he proposed an idea that he called continental drift. And it's just like it sounds. Continental drift means the continents are drifting. This is a hypothesis that continents have moved slowly apart from each other and to their current location. So here you see Africa, here you see South America breaking up. So what did the world look like before the continents began drifting apart? The idea here is that you had something called Pangea, which breaks down pan means all, and gia means earth or land. So this is all land. So all continents were once all one landmass, Pangea. Now there's a game that I used to play, a computer game, and they had a Pangea mode. So this is Civilization, and it's a pretty fun game. I don't know if anyone's ever played it. If you have, comment down below, tell me what you think. But one of the uh, maps is called Pangea. So you see this is all one big gigantic supercontinent. You could do other levels, which would be like continents, where you would have bunch of them broken up into smaller pieces, islands with really tiny islands all over the world. This is Pangea. Let's take a look back in time what these continents may have looked like. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll through these. You can see the land masses are slowly moving apart from one another until we get to where we are today. Here's us in North America. And here's a timeline so you can get a, a basic idea of what's going on and how much time it took to do so. Go ahead and take a look at this section. So Wigner's idea of continental drift at the time was actually quite controversial. Not many scientists at that time believed him. A lot of time, a lot of them thought that he was way off and kind of crazy. And take a look at this little cartoon. I think it's pretty good. So Wigner at the time had a difficult time proving his idea of continental drift. And what could be the problem with that? Why would the idea that continents move be a very difficult idea to prove. It rhymes. I just, I'm just a natural talent. A couple big reasons why continental drift was difficult to prove. <laughs> you can hear my dog snoring in the background. 
He's got, how about not snoring? Well, the reasons why continental drift was difficult to prove is that it's an extremely slow process. It makes it very, very difficult to observe directly. So if you were to sit there and watch a snail crawl across the floor, you can see it, but I mean, it certainly is a very slow process, but continental drift is an even slower process. And not just that, continents are extremely big, obviously, so it's very difficult to observe them as they move. So if you're standing on the continent, which you are right now, you can't even really tell it's a continent. It's too big. The biggest reason that his scientists' colleagues didn't buy into continental drift, however, was that Wagner couldn't explain how the continents moved. So he said that the continents moved, which is a you know an idea, but he couldn't explain how that could occur. So people were like, what? No, that can't happen. They're too big. They're not going to move. How has that ever happened? Well, Wagner couldn't come up with a, with a good idea for that. One of the things I don't want you to think is that Wagner did not have any evidence to support his theory. He did. He had plenty of evidence, and I want to talk about that evidence right now. Remember, the big reason why people didn't go for his theory at the time is that he had no mechanism. He had no explanation of how the continents themselves could move. All right, probably the biggest piece of evidence is what's known as fossil evidence. Fossil evidence of continental drift. What that means is that there are similar fossils that are found in various parts of the world separated by oceans. So like for example, the Mesosaurus was found in South America and also Mesosaurus fossils found in Africa. Notice that they're separated by a vast ocean. Mesosaurus was significant in providing evidence for the theory of continental drift because its remains were found in Southern Africa and East South America, two widely separated regions. And this will give you an idea of the size of Mesosaurus. So it almost looks like maybe the size of a, a small dog. Mesosaurus was a coastal animal. What that means is that it would live along the edges of a continent. Uh, maybe kind of like you would think of like an alligator living in Florida. The Mesosaurus would not be an animal swimming across the oceans. Alligators don't swim across the ocean. So the idea is, is since they couldn't swim across the ocean, is that the animal lived here and lived here, and the fossils were left here and left here as the continent broke apart and spread away from each other. There's a bunch more fossil examples than just that. Here you go ahead and take a look at this chart. Was the Mesosaurus, could it swim? It could swim, but it just, we wouldn't swim that far. Here's a skeleton of the Mesosaurus, give you an idea of what it looks like. Kind of reminds me of a dog. Another type of evidence is known as rock evidence. What rock evidence is, is that in various parts of the world, you see rocks of the same composition, same mineral mixture, and same age, but they're found in completely separate continents. So like these blue rock formations all match up in terms of age and rock type minerals. These green match up, uh, the yellow match up. So you can see that these blue here and the green here, the green may have separated down the middle here with this part going left, this part going right. The blue, same thing has happened where this section broke apart from here, this section is going west, this section is going east. For example, rock formations in Scotland, which is here, match rock formations in New York, which is here. This makes you think that these rock structures were once together and were torn apart and spread across that great distance over time. Now this is pretty cool because this is actually something that people can see kind of live and firsthand. This is Iceland and Iceland is ripped down the middle where this section of Iceland, this part of the country is going west, this part of the island is going east and you can see that rift just straight down the middle of Iceland. And like this part over here, 
Traveling west, this part over here, traveling east. Climate evidence. Climate evidence is clues that a continent's current climate is vastly different than its climate was a long time ago. And we can see evidence of that by, for example, if you, when you're in Antarctica, in Antarctica they've found fossils that show that there used to be plants that grow in jungles there. Like, for example, ferns. Uh, jungle, jungle ferns do not grow in Antarctica now today. So that kind of gives you an idea that Antarctica probably had a much different climate than it does today. Here are some of the fossils that were found in Antarctica. You can see leafy plants. Certainly not going to find those in Antarctica, <laughs> Antarctica today. Here's some more. This implies that Antarctica used to be closer to the what many years ago as compared to where it is now. So think about where is the climate tropical? Where on the earth would you find warm tropical jungles? Are they going to be close to the poles where Antarctica is today? No, of course not. It's going to be closer to the equator. So many years ago, the idea is that Antarctica was actually probably for pretty close to the equator. And then it, over time, it moved to the poles, where it is now, where it's very, very cold. Let's review the evidence supporting continental drift. First of all, we had puzzle pieces. Some continents look like they used to fit together, in particular, South America and Africa. Number two, fossil evidence. Fossils of the same land creatures found on continents separated by oceans. Rock evidence, similar rock formations found on continents separated by vast oceans. And finally, climate evidence. Fossils and glacial scratches imply the climate of continents has changed drastically. This is possibly caused by continents moving towards the equator, towards the poles, or vice versa, away from the equator or away from the poles. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this lecture. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, or even give me thumbs down. That's okay, too, if you hate it. All right, guys, see ya.